Hi everybody, my name is Angie. Welcome to my channel. Uh, so today I'm going to be sewing up another car trash can. Uh, it is, I'm using a free pattern by Mormino. I'll go ahead and link it in the comments or in the description below. Um, it's a free pattern, easy to make, um, and it's kind of minimal supplies. You just need a little bit of interfacing, uh, your exterior fabric, and then some waterproof canvas for the lining. You can make it with something other than waterproof canvas for the lining if you want to. Uh, the pattern is written for waterproof canvas. I have tried it with other fabric before, before I started using waterproof canvas. It does work, it just kind of makes the bag a little slouchier because waterproof canvas is nice and thick. Um, so it kind of helps it hold its structure a little bit better. Uh, so just keep that in mind when you are making it with something other than waterproof canvas for the lining. Um, but that is what I'm going to be using today, uh, waterproof canvas for the lining. So, um, so this is what the, uh, the finished product looks like. This is another one that I have made in the past. Um, so it has Velcro that you can hang around the headrest. So you hang that around the headrest in your car, or you can, um, you can always like sew it together to make it a little bit sturdier. And then you can have it, um, hang it from a, um, like the door handles on a door um, to make it like a kid's toy bag or something like that. Um, so that's another option as well, or just leave it with the Velcro and you know do that or hang it from the stairs, whatever you wanna do. It's a nice and versatile bag. You can use it for whatever. Um, so that is what I'm making today. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so like I said, to get started, um, the pattern gives you all this information, but to get started, you need your fabric interface. So I am just using quilt cotton. So I just got this from a local quilt shop. It's really pretty, I love it. Um, but I have this interface with SF101. Um, just any kind of woven interfacing. If you have a um, woven interfacing that's a little bit thicker, that'll work too. I've also made this, um, the bag that I showed you previously with the dogs. This one, I used um, canvas, like a lightweight canvas, and that works great too. And that I also just interfaced with SF101. And then for the lining, I have my waterproof canvas. And then again, the tops of the bag, which are also interfaced with the SF101. So to get started, I'm gonna go ahead and take these two pieces that are shaped like that. They're the part that goes around the handle or around the headrest. I'm gonna go ahead and put those right sides together and pin or clip all the way around. So I have the whole thing clipped together and then I'm going to go ahead and just sew, I'm not going to sew around the top part here, but I'm going to sew all around the bottom. So I'm going to start here, work, work my way all the way down and then end up over here. And you can use any seam allowance, um, just as long as you are consistent throughout the entire bag. So I like to use three eighths inch seam allowance. That's just um, an easy line for me to keep track of on my machine here. So I'm gonna sew this all the way around at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And we'll backstitch at the beginning and the end. Okay, so there we go. We went ahead and sewed all the way around that, leaving this top part open. You don't have to sew that. And now I'm gonna go ahead and just trim down my seam, allow seam allowances. Um, it makes it a little bit easier when I'm top stitching this um, so it's not as bulky. I'm just gonna go ahead and trim back the seam allowances just a little bit and snip the corners here to give you a nice better corner to poke out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. I'm 
I'm going in and just clipping into the corner there as close as I can get to that corner seam there. Um, it just makes it easier to turn and gives you a nice better um, point there on those corners too. we go that is all trimmed down so now we need to go ahead and turn it right side out okay so you can use um, your scissors um, like a blunt pair of scissors to help you turn this right side out I like to use a little chopstick I got it in a bag of batting or polyfill so what I like to do is stick the chopstick into one of the legs it just helps open it up and you just kind of pinch it as you go and then that helps open it up so that you can go ahead and stick your thumb in and start turning it through. Once you got your thumb in a little bit, I stick the chopstick in there and then just start pulling on either side to pull it down. And then while the chopstick is in there, poke out those corners. And then we'll do the same thing to the other side. Okay, so what you got now are Barbie looking pants. Uh, it's supposed to be like this, but I always think it looks like Barbie pants. Um, so we'll go ahead and take this to the iron and just give it a nice press. Roll the seams out with your fingers to get a nice crisp seam here. And just go ahead and give that a good press. Okay, so now we have it all pressed. Um, the seams are all nice and flat. So we'll go ahead and just top stitch the entire way around. Um, this part of it, you can top stitch it if you want. I'm gonna go ahead and do it um, just to kind of hold things together a little bit more um, when you're putting the bag all together, but just go ahead and top stitch around the entire thing at about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. There we go. So that is, you're not going to be able to see it because I'm using coordinating black thread, but it is top stitch all the way around. So now we're done with this piece. We can go ahead and set it aside. I like one last thing that I like to do on this piece here is I'm going to fold it in half and find the center while I have this piece sitting out. So I just take it, fold it in half, fold the two ends together, find the center here and just make a little notch snip, not far down. Uh, maybe like a eighth of an inch, quarter inch down. So you can see it is gonna be well within my seam allowance, but that helps me when I'm putting the bag all together so that I know that this is all centered and not gonna be, you know, kind of off-centered when I'm going, sewing it all together, so. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and take our exterior piece and our two exterior pieces, lay those right sides together and then clip all the way around, except for across the top, just on the um, sides and the bottom, clip all the way around. Okay, so it's all the way clipped all the way around and I'm gonna go ahead and sew the entire thing at a 3 8 inch seam allowance.
Okay, so I didn't clip my thread, so it's kind of all funky looking here with the sides pinned together, but um, that is what that looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim my threads now. And then I'm gonna go ahead and trim down my seam allowances um, to about a, a quarter of an inch. And again, it just helps with the bulk. Okay, so we have the seam allowances trimmed down, so we can go ahead and box the corners now. So I'm gonna go ahead and poke my fingers in through here to just help me kind of get a good seam here. And we'll flatten it so that the side and the bottom edges meet. And you can butterfly this seam open, or I just like to push one one way and uh, push this one this way, push this one the other, nesting seams like they do in quilting. And then I just pop a clip on there you can throw a few on there and we'll do the same to this side throw a clip on there and then sew this at 3 8 inch seam allowance um, again back stitching at the beginning and the end Also like to um, backstitch over the center seam here it just gives it um, a, a little extra strength I don't know that's just my preference um, anytime the seams meet I feel like it could potentially cause weakness so I just like to double pack over it um, and then we'll go ahead and trim this one down too, the side or the box corners All right, so there we go. And then we can go ahead and set this one aside then. Okay, so now we can go ahead and get out our waterproof canvas lining. Um, so with waterproof canvas, if you are working with it for the very first time, um, the scratchy, uh, canvassy side, that is the right side. And then the shiny, glossy, rubbery side is the wrong side. So we'll go ahead and put these two right sides together and clip. All right, and then I am doing something different on this one. Um, I am gonna go ahead and not leave a hole in the bottom for turning. I'll show you later what I'm gonna do, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and just like the exterior, I'm gonna go ahead and sew all the way around, um, except what I'm gonna do, um, one way to help avoid a saggy lining in the bottom of your bag is to increase the seam allowance on the lining. Um, so if you think of it in terms of cups, you have two cups that are the same size. If you try and stick one inside the other, it's not gonna fit. It's, it's not gonna go, because they're both the exact same size. One, the one that's going inside needs to be slightly smaller. So you wanna increase the seam allowance when you're about halfway down to make the bottom of this bag or the lining slightly smaller than the bottom of the exterior. And that's gonna help it have a nice snug fit and not be all saggy. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start out at a 3 8 inch, um, yeah, 3 8 inch seam allowance on the top. Once I get about maybe halfway down, I'm gonna slowly, over the course of a, a few inches, I'm gonna slowly start increasing just up to a half of an inch. So I'm only increasing it an eighth of an inch. Um, and um, the eighth of an inch on either side of the bag is gonna be enough. It's not gonna be too small on the bottom of the bag that you're gonna notice, oh, this lining's too small, um, but it's gonna, it's just gonna help it fit very snugly. So by the time I get down to the bottom here, I'm gonna be sewing at a half of an inch. I'm gonna sew a half an inch seam allowance all the way across. And then when I'm coming back up the other side, I'm gonna start out at a half an inch seam allowance. And then about halfway up and over the course of just a couple of inches, I'm gonna slowly start increasing um, or decreasing my seam allowance back to that 3 8 inch seam allowance so that when I'm back up at the top over here, I'm back at that 3 8 inch seam allowance.
Okay, so I'm about, uh, not quite halfway, but I'm gonna slowly start working my way over, just like one stitch at a time, barely making any movement, working my way over to a half of an inch, so that now I started about up here, right over here, if you can see that, and now I am, you know, I still got another like two inches to the bottom, but I am now at that half inch seam allowance. So now I'm going to continue sewing that half inch all the way down the rest of the back. And I'm going to cut over to the bottom and the bottom, I'm going to do the entire bottom at a half an inch. And again, coming up the other side, I'm going to start out at half an inch. And when I get to a few inches up, I'm going to slowly start working my way back over to that 3 8 inch seam allowance. So that now at this point over the course of, you know, maybe that far, I slowly worked my way back over so that now I'm at a 3 8 inch seam allowance and I'm going to continue the top at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and trim down the seam allowances on this one. So my seam allowances are all trimmed down. So now I gotta go ahead and do the same thing on the bottom, boxing the corners. And for boxing the corners, we are again gonna do that half inch seam allowance. Um, the rubbery side, uh, just as a side note, the rubbery side of waterproof canvas can be a little tricky on some machines. You may need a walking foot um, just to kind of help pull it through. Um, my machine, it depends on the day and the type of waterproof canvas that I am using. Sometimes it doesn't like it and it starts sticking. Uh, sometimes it's fine. Today it's been okay. So, um, But a walking foot usually helps with that if you're having trouble with your machine. it's not giving me grief and then it does whatever okay so now we'll go ahead and send uh, trim down the seam allowances here too And then we didn't do it on the exterior piece, so we got to go back and do it now. But we want to go ahead and find the centers of um, the front and the back of this bag, too. It just helps us line everything up nicely uh, when we're pinning it all together. Make sure we're getting everything lined up. Um, so what I like to do is just kind of push together the two side seams. Because I know those are equal distance apart. And then we'll just kind of flatten it out. And just clip off a tiny little piece. Teensy little piece barely even see it just to mark the center there and then we'll do the same over on this side push those side seams together Put that one and then I'm going to grab my exterior and do the same thing pushing those two side seams together to get the front and the back Okay, so there we go. So now it's time to put it all together. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is take our, um, the strap part, whatever you wanna call this, and we will go ahead and uh, let's put this right side out. And then 
we're gonna take this piece here, find one of the center marks. If you like one of the sides for the front or the back, you know, keep that in mind that this is gonna go on the back of it. Um, and we're just gonna go ahead and line up the center mark of this piece with the center mark of the main bag. We'll line up those little notches that we clipped and we will clip that together. Okay, and then we'll just go ahead and base stitch this seam down here at about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so we're just tacking that down to have it in place. It just helps with the shifting. With all the layers of everything, it's one less piece that can shift around when you're sewing it all together. So we got that on here. So what we're gonna do is take our entire exterior piece with the little straps on there, and we're gonna go ahead and insert it into our lining. So our lining is wrong side out. So when we insert it in here, we're gonna have right sides together. We'll just go ahead and insert that all the way in, and we're gonna match up these corner pieces here or the side pieces, side seams. Match up those side seams and clip those. Match up the notches on either side. I always start with those four. That way I know that those four parts are all even. Okay, and then I just start filling in clips all the rest of the way around. to hold everything in place. Okay, so we have it all clipped together. So now um, if you remember, we did not leave an opening in the bottom of the bag, so um, we need to leave an opening in order to turn this. So what I am going to do is I'm going to leave an opening in the top of the bag. Um, my thought process is this needs to be top stitched anyways. So like when you're sewing, um, you know, a lining closed where you just, you know, top stitch it and it closes it up. That's what we're going to do. Got to top stitch it anyway, so that'll cinch up the opening that we used. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. So I'm going to offset it just a little bit um, so that it's not like right smack in the middle of the bag. But I also don't want to do it over this back seam where the, um, the handle that goes around the headrest is. So I'm just going to offset it a little bit. I just want it big enough that I can like insert my hand in. So I'm just going to leave like three or four inches over here and over by the side seam. I don't want to do it on the side seam, but just I might sew a couple inches over the side um, to the side seam and then make a little three to four inch jump and then continue around. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. So I think I'm just gonna start over here and then I'll end sewing at like an inch past the side seam. So a little before, maybe a couple inches before the center mark here, I'm just gonna insert the bag. Um, I lied, I'm gonna do from the exterior side. In which case I'm going the wrong direction. Never mind. I am going to start an inch right before the side seam. And this one I'm going to do a 3 8 inch seam allowance, which will come in well through, uh, well past our basting stitches over here. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, and then I'm going to back stitch. And again, I like to back stitch over these side seams. I don't know, just because habit. And then I also am going to um, back stitch over. I can feel right here that I am coming up to um, the part that goes around the headrest. So I'm going to go ahead and back stitch over that. Just it gets a lot of stress in that area, um, you know, from, you know, hanging. That's what it's hanging off of. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and backstitch there and then just maybe randomly throughout. Just do a little backstitch just to give it a little extra security. There really shouldn't be that much weight pulling on these. It's only being held together by Velcro, but still. Okay, now I'm coming up. I can feel the thickness change. So I know that I'm coming up to the end of my um, handle piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and when I get to that, backstitch over that again. So I just passed my center mark. So I want to go just another couple of inches or so and then backstitch. There we go. And I didn't leave myself quite as much room as I said I was going to, but that's fine. Um, so now we just need to go ahead and turn the entire thing right side out. Okay. And I don't trim down the top seam allowance. Um, just, I don't know personal preference. I just don't. So I'll put my hand in there and then I'm going to start with the exterior and just start working my way out with that. I came across one of the little handles. So I'm going to grab that and gently tug that out. side of the handle. Okay, there we go. So that's like the thickest part of it. Okay, so we have all the exterior out. So now we just need to work on getting the lining through. And you just want to be careful. You don't want to pull too hard and pop your stitches or tear anything. and poke out those corners there, poke out this side. Okay, get my hand out of there again. Okay. waterproof canvas is thick and it's trying to go inside of the fabric which is thinner but just work your lining inside of the exterior and then at this point I like to give my handle here just a nice tug not, I'm not trying to tear it I just want to make sure that I didn't miss anything and that it is nice and secure. I'd rather know now when I can go back and fix it that I didn't catch something or that I didn't sew it as securely as I would have hoped than once it's all together and you go and hang it up and it tears or it, you know, a seam comes apart. All right. So now I am going to go ahead and take this over to my iron and give it a nice press with a lot of steam. With waterproof canvas, you can iron it, but you need to use constant steam and keep the iron moving. Don't hold it in one spot or you'll melt the backing of it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just give this a quick, nice steam um, to get the edges all um, or the, the top seam all nice and ready for top stitching. All right, so I have it all nice and pressed except for my opening. So um, here's my opening right there. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is I just stick my fingers in the side edges and kind of give it a tug. And it just naturally folds the seam down. You can kind of see. And then I'm just going to pinch it together. 
and make sure it is nice and flush with the rest of the uh, top seam and we'll give that a press and then we'll go ahead and clip that. Okay, so I went ahead and gave that a press. So I'm gonna go ahead and just clip that into place. The nice thing about waterproof canvas is um, you can kind of pinch it and it does kind of hold its um, shape at that point. So then if you take a look, you can't even tell that that is where the opening is. It is nice and flush with the rest of the bag. And I'm gonna go ahead, it is kind of nice and pressed into place and set, but I'm gonna go ahead and clip it just to make sure there's no shifting before I top stitch. So obviously I can't clip over on this side here, but the rest of it I can, so I will, why not? Okay, so now it is ready for top stitching. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start um, where my opening is just so that I am closing that up right off the bat. But I'm gonna go ahead and insert that right under my needle. And at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, we're gonna go ahead and top stitch that closed. Okay, so we're coming up to the top uh, handle part. So you just wanna go ahead and go slow after, or go slow over this. Um, depending on the fabric choices that you made for this bag, it can get pretty thick right here. Um, so just go slow, um, and make sure you're not um, getting st skip stitches or breaking a needle or anything. And as I'm going, I am just kind of using this hand here to make sure that the lining is pushed out of the way um, and, you know, staying taut um, while I'm holding this this way and also kind of giving this a tug. So simultaneously doing all three of those just to make sure that this is top stitching a nice seam here. Okay, so that is nice and top stitched there. Um, so the last step now is just attaching the little bit of Velcro at the top. So we'll go ahead and do that. Right, my bag of Velcro, and I just usually take like a two inch piece off of this. So I'm not gonna use my fabric scissors for this. Just cause it's kind of scratchy. I don't know if it would damage them or anything, just to be safe. These are the scissors that I usually use for uh, zippers, so I have a separate pair that I use for that. So we'll just go ahead and cut like a two inch piece. It doesn't have to be exact. Okay, so we have the two pieces. Of Velcro. We'll go ahead and determine if there's, if you have a preference, if you want, um, you know, the right side to come on top of the left side or the left side to come on top of the right side. You can determine that now. Um, if one of them looks prettier or if you don't like the top stitching on one, having the Velcro there kind of hides it, you know, so. So let's go ahead and I want the right side to go over top of the left side. So I'll just take one of the pieces. I'm gonna put it on the bottom side because it's gonna come on like this. So I need the Velcro onto this side. And you can clip it if you want. I just hold it in place 
Um, it doesn't have to be exact or anything. There's no precision necessarily with this, just as long as it's in the vicinity of this little spot at the top. So we'll go ahead and just stitch that down. And I like to go ahead and, um, again, because this is going to get a lot of pressure from, you know, pulling the Velcro open. Um, so I like to, um, you know, do a couple of stitches and then back stitch, do a couple of stitches and then back stitch all the way around the outside of the Velcro just to get it uh, extra secure. I have a tendency to clip too close and then they unravel. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Okay. So now we'll take our other piece. And I have to come back here and take a look at it. Okay, so I need it to be on this side. Okay, so I'll go ahead and oh, thought I did that wrong for a second. Okay, there we go, and it is Velcro is nice and tight, stitched on there, and then as you can, well, maybe you can't see it's black. It's kind of hard to tell, but the lining is nice and tight in there. It comes right into the corners there without being baggy or saggy. It's a nice open bottom to the bag. And it just hangs very nicely right on your headrest. You can do these in any sorts of fun prints. Um, these make um, great gifts um, for any time of year and any person who has a car, these would be great for. Like I said, you can use them for toys for children or it's intended for trash can for your car using the waterproof canvas. You don't have to worry about getting ickiness in there. You just wipe it clean. You can throw it in the washer, doesn't matter. And then if you come up to the top here, this was my opening here. I'm not gonna fold it open and you know create a seam or anything, but it's fully closed. You would never know that that is where the opening is. So it is a nice hidden spot for turning. So that's what I like to do. So there we go. All right, so there is the car trash can, a uh, free pattern by Mormino. Go ahead and check for the link for it in the description box below. Um, if you have any questions about this, you know, feel free to leave a comment below asking, um, and I'll try and give you some pointers. Um, if you are going to make this, or if you have made this bag in the past, let me know in the comments down below if you like this pattern, any other patterns that you enjoy sewing. And uh, make sure to like and subscribe, like the video if you liked it, and subscribe to stay tuned for other videos and other um, projects that I'm going to be working on. All right, thanks. Bye.